The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. It is the empowerment to perform at a supernatural level to attain extraordinary results. Now, God had his blessing or anointing on Abraham. Now, he is telling Abraham that anything that comes against you is going to have to pay the price. And I'm saying to you that this same thing goes for me. That no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment shall be condemned. Now look what happened to Abraham. Let's go on down in chapter 12 now. And let's go on down and see as Abraham started his journey. Because in verse 4 it says, and Abraham departed. All right, so as we go on down here, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 14. And look what it says here. He says, and it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. And the princes also, the leaders of Pharaoh, saw her and then commended her before Pharaoh. Pharaoh, there's a good looking woman out there somewhere. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with a great plague because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Now here is Pharaoh, he is not, this, this, this deed that he's doing here is not something that God sanctions. And so now because of Abraham's faith in following God. God, based on God's covenant promise to him, now God is going to protect Abraham. And not only Abraham, but his family and his seed, Lord have mercy. So now here is Pharaoh, all of a sudden Pharaoh is being plagued. Now Pharaoh woke up, he said, what is this you have done to me? And, 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 uh, and had it so that uh, Abraham, he put Abraham out, told him, take all the stuff you want and let's get on out of the country. And look what Abraham had when he came out. This is found in Genesis chapter 13 and verse 1. And he said, and Abraham went out of the Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him unto the south. And Abram was very rich, very rich. Say me too in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Now, because he had to put it down there because some people think, well, he's spiritually rich. No, no, he had moolah, he had, he had things, he had stuff, okay? No, this is interesting because I'm just gonna give you a revelation that I get, okay? I'm gonna teach you from that. It's kind of interesting here that he said in verse 17, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh's house because of Sarah, his wife. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not 
tell me that she was your wife. Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife. Take her and get out of here. No, I don't. And go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. Now, how does he know that that was because of Abraham's wife? Now, I, I, you know, I'm just kind of putting myself in that situation that maybe his sorceress told him. Said, this thing is, this thing is, this, this is not. No. I'm, can I take you to a depth that, that I'm, I'm at? <laughs> he knew that this was not coming from the snakes that he worshipped. He knew this. He knew this. This wasn't some evil somebody plaguing him. Because they couldn't. Or they wouldn't. And if you know anything about the pharaohs, they had a snake on the, on the thing and symbolizing, you know, their, well, back in the garden, really. <laughs> but my point to you is, is even back there, he was spiritually sensitive enough to know that this shouldn't happen to him. Y'all with me? Now I'm saying this because you, you, because you got born again, you're going to be, well, let's go. Let's go to the scripture first. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 14. And look what it says here. He says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Who's talking here? Jesus. Jesus. All right, next verse. If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray the Father and he'll give you another who? Comforter. That he may abide with you how long? Forever. Who is the comforter? The Holy Spirit. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be what? In you. And I will not leave you comfortless, and I'll come to you. Now, who was leading the disciples and taking them and teaching them? Who was that? Jesus. Now he's saying, you're going to get another teacher. And church, I'm going to the Father and send you back another teacher. It's going to be the Holy Ghost. And he's going to teach you some things. So you're in here and you're being taught by the anointing of God. Because the anointing of God is what God gives you to do God's work. That he doesn't want you to preach without that anointing. He doesn't want you to, to do anything as a believer without the anointing of God. Because it's going to give you extraordinary results. Now he goes to John chapter 17. And in John chapter 17, starting at verse 14, he says, I've given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world. Say, I'm not of the world. Not Say, I'm in the world, not of the world. He said, even as I'm not of the world. Watch this. I pray not that you should take them out of the world. So he's not praying that you leave here. But that thou should keep them from the evil. I call it diplomatic immunity. I'm saying that Satan cannot touch you with evil. Didn't I say that? You know, I used to pray a wrong prayer. I said, every virus and disease and germ that touches my body dies instantly. Well, that ain't the scripture. The scripture says, no evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dress. It didn't say it's going to touch you. See, I'm praying the wrong prayer. No wonder I'm coming down with some sniffles. 
See, I'm praying the wrong prayer, see? And I'm just saying, just a little slip of the tongue, you can open up the door for Satan to do things that Satan had, had not had authority to do. All right, now, I'm saying to you that Pharaoh had a spiritual sensitivity, or his sorcerers, that they sensed that this was a work of the God of Abraham. This is the work of the God of Abraham. Now, God is sending you places. He is on purpose planting the righteous among the wicked. And some of them are not going to like you. And they're not, not disliking you cause you're black. They dislike you because you saved. Now, I'm trying to help somebody now because you you own this trip. Listen, once you get saved, you're in a whole nother category. And I'm just here to tell you right now that there are people going to hate you and don't know why they hate you. And the reason why they hate you and don't know why is because you're full of God. And when you're full of God, the devil hates you. And he wants to find a way to get you out of the way. Now, I'm saying your spiritual sensitivity should take you above some something that you think is racial or you think is this or that. True enough, they got that out there. But that your, your biggest area is going to be because the devil doesn't like you. Now... The problem that he has is he can't stop you because everything you do is going to prosper and God's going to always cause you to triumph. So you don't win a few, lose a few, you win everything. And if you win everything, you've got anointing of promotion on you that your promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west or from, it comes from God. And as God raises you up, the enemy's going to be mad about it. Do you hear what I'm saying? So you are on your way to the top. Now, when you go into those areas, you have to be aware that every system, institution, culture, environment, legislation, codes, conduct, regulations, and policies must adjust themselves to accommodate your divine purpose. I said must adjust themselves. This is not a iffy. This is Bible. This is something because greater is he that is in you, come on, than he that is in the world. Every believer must know the level of power redemption has conferred upon him or her. You must know it. It doesn't make any difference. Look at Esther. Here is Esther, and now she is uh, supposed to go before the government, before the king. The king re really represents the government. And tell the king not to have that law go through that's going to slay or kill all the Jews at a certain time the next year. Well, she didn't want to go. Well, Mordecai said something to Esther. He said, Esther... Girl, I had to put that in there. I didn't like that. He said, now, I know you don't want to go. I, I want to get to find it and read it. It's found in Esther chapter 4 and verse 14. For if thou altogether hold your peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from some other place. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou hast come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Now that's not just talking about Esther. That's talking about you. 
because there are ungodly laws being made. And one of the reasons why they're being made is because the church lost its voice. The church lost a knowledge of who it was and what it had to fight with. And I'm telling you, I'm bringing it back. I'm letting you know that you got the vengeance of the Lord. And the vengeance of the Lord won't only really stop spells from coming at you, but it'll stop governments from trying to torment you. Everything that's tormenting, harassing you is going to be put down. It doesn't make any difference what it is or how big it is. Say amen to that. Now, the reason I, I focus in on and, and realize what he said now, he said, wait a minute, if you don't go, God's going to pick somebody else. Now, what does that mean? That means that before you came into this earth, God had an assignment for you. I said, before you hit your mother's womb, I shouldn't say it like that. Before you came into your mother's womb, God had already had an assignment for you. He had a purpose for your being here. Come on. He had an assignment that he wanted you to fulfill. Are you with me here? He knew everything that he wanted to do. He had wisdom laid up for you and everything. But if you don't go, he will find somebody else. I told God, don't find nobody else. I'm your man. Don't go to anybody else. All right. Now, let's go back to this, this spiritual sensitivity again. Because there's something wrong here in the camp. There's something wrong here. See, because we haven't been spiritually sensitive. And because we haven't been spiritually sensitive, the devil's been walking off with self. Come on. Come on. Some of y'all should have been married by now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me, let me go some. Let me do something else. I'm only saying that some should have had businesses. Some should have had this. Some should have had that. Some should have had this and that and this and that. But the devil used sorcery. He used spiritual spells. He used all the things and weapons because they're still looking for something natural. They think it's something natural holding them back. There's nothing natural holding you back. Nothing natural is that powerful. But when Satan comes in, he comes in with spiritual wickedness. And to stop you from fulfilling the, the assignment that God has for your life. Say amen to that. And that sickness just didn't happen. That sickness came as a result of a demonic spell that was cast. Come on now, help me. Now I'm saying to you, I know we did some things wrong. I know we did this and so forth, but you saved now. And I'm telling you, most of the things that are happening against the church are not happening because it just happened to happen. It was just a coincidence. Or I didn't know, oh, no, the enemy was behind it. Here I was, we were in Sister Beverly's house. We came to Chicago with uh, $200. And do you know, we stayed with her after about seven months. I said, wait a minute, we got to get out of here. Now, what are we trying to do? We have been saving money. Every time the money would be eaten up. Uh, Something would happen to the car. The kids would need the money. But if we couldn't save it. We're trying in the natural. So notice they were going over to the other side of the ship. And here comes a storm. Where? Out of nowhere. 
out of nowhere. It's the same storm that tore down Job's house and killed his kids. It's the same devil. But because the church has lost its spiritual sensitivity, it thinks, well, we just got a weather problem. You don't have no weather problem. You got a demon problem, and you're going to fix it. Folks, and, and so what happened? We tried to save it and save it. Pretty soon I got fed up. I said, wait a minute, something's wrong with this. See, this Pharaoh, see, he immediately detected. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not from the demon God I serve. This came from another God. And he said, wait a minute, Abraham, why did you trick me? See, he found out, see, because he was said, I'm just saying, we need our discerning back. Come on, we, we, we need to know, wait a minute, that wasn't the cause of that. The cause of that was right here. And even in profession today, because people have gotten away from God, they think it just happened or this is, or it runs in your family. And you in a new family. It don't run in your family. Every gene in your family is doing exactly what has been programmed to do by Almighty God. Folks, you should be rich by now. Ah! Can I share a scripture with you that God gave me? Can I share it with you? All right, when I read this to you, don't choke. When I read this to you, it's because God gave it to me. Here's what it says. You will never have any need that God cannot meet in a day. Now you think about it, whether it's a healing need, come on, whether it's a money need, come on now, tuition for the kid, come on. You will never have a need that God cannot meet, come on, in a day. Say, I'll take mine now. See, see, we have been programmed. We got to now get the mind of who? Christ. And the mind of Christ is expressed in Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. And this is what he said that God, how God will deliver you. I tell you that he will avenge them when? Speedily. Speedily. The same day. The same day. The same day. The woman said, my kids are about to be taken. The man of God said, what do you got in your house? He said, I don't have anything but a little oil. He said, that's good. Go borrow vessels. Don't borrow fuel. Come on in. Shut the door. Start pouring the oil. She poured the oil. Got done with the oil. She said, now what do I do now? He said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and live you and your kids on the rest. Now notice what was doing all the talking. It wasn't the man. It was the anointing on the man. See, the anointing was telling them how to fix your problem in a day. And before you had that anointing, you couldn't fix a problem in a day. But the anointing will fix your problem in a day. I'm going to give you one more thing. Every word you believe releases virtue for performance. Mary, you're going to have a baby. And this is Luke chapter 1. And verse 35, and Mary said to, to the angel, when the angel said that, and he said, the Holy Ghost is going to come on you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, the, also the holy thing that shall be born of you shall be this called the son of who? Mary, you're not going to have just a baby. You're going to have son of God. He said, Behold, the cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her. For with God, nothing shall be what? Impossible. Next verse. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to that word. Now, if you would, go all the way down to verse 45. And this is what Elizabeth said. Blessed is she that believeth. For, come on, there shall be a performance of those things, come on, which were told her from the Lord. So I said, you can be out of debt by, by. Now, you gotta understand, 
when your prophet says this, you got to believe that. And when you believe that, it will be a performance. Look what he says in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should what? Repent. Has he said and shall he not what? Do it. Has he spoken and shall he not what? Make it good. Who's going to make it good? What is your job? Believe. And that is it. That is it. They didn't get into that promised land in Hebrews 4 because they didn't believe. And all you got to do is believe. You're you will never have any need that God cannot meet within 24 hours. I'll say that again. You'll never have any need that God cannot meet within 24 hours. God spoke that to me one morning. I said, wow, that's it. You see, think about it. The same faith God used to create light, let there be light. And the Bible says light was, and that was the end of the first day. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That same faith he gave to you. He gave to you to operate in this earth. 24-hour faith. Praise God. Well, today's offering is a special. Now, I bound these two up together. One is the comforter has come, and also the other one is tapping the wisdom of God. Now, this is a powerful package here. You see, God has made a way for all of us to prosper, whether it's your marriage, children, body, whether it's your finances, every prosperity, every area, God wants to increase in your life. He wants you to prosper. The way to do it is through his word. Order this today. You will be blessed. Praise God. Well, until next time, this is Bill Winston saying,